What's up guys and girls, it's Vision, and I just wanted to do a quick video on the Harbinger mechanic and how to interact with it, since I've seen a lot of confusion on how the system works and how you can progress through your Forgotten Knights faction and killing all the Harbingers to work your way up to fighting the Pinnacle boss. Step 1. The very first step, you go through endgame as normal, complete your campaign, go through monoliths, work your way up through the timelines all the way up to the level 90s. The very first Harbinger ap appears when you kill your the boss in your final level 90 timeline. So you can choose which one of these you want to do. It doesn't matter the order, but you get to your level 90 timelines. You beat them one, two, three, and then on the third one, after the boss dies, the first Harbinger will appear. This is in normal timelines, uh, level 90. After beating your first Harbinger, you get teleported to the Shattered Road, and that is the faction hub for the Forgotten Knights. Uh, you can see that there will be a little area for it here up on the map, so let's teleport there now and check it. So here we are at the Shattered Road. This is the faction hub for the Forgotten Knights. You're going to be coming here every time you kill a new Harbinger. There are 10 in total, one for each timeline. And basically every time you slay one of these, you're going to end up back in this area, complete a little quest line, and then you're good to go for the next one. So in addition to coming here after your first Harbinger and interacting with the Forgotten Knights, you're also going to have the Forgotten Knights on your faction tab. So your whatever item faction you choose, and then also Forgotten Knights here. You can access this by pushing the Y key by default. And in the Harbinger, the Forgotten Knights tree, there are a couple of things you can see here. Your rank rewards, rank 1 all the way through rank 10, one for each Harbinger. So every time you kill a Harbinger, you're going to go up one rank, and this gives different bonuses like Blessing Rolls being rolled twice, and then you take the higher value, um, some upgrades for the Nemesis system, and different bonuses for when you kill a Harbinger like Additional Glyph of Envy drop chance, and that sort of thing. So besides the rank reward screen, there's also the Harbinger screen, and this is going to be the most important for figuring out which Harbinger you need to kill next. Here you'll see a list of all of the timelines from Fall of the Outcasts all the way through the three level 90 timelines up here. And the two important things to note here are right here, the minimum required corruption. It will tell you what corruption you need to be at to kill your next Harbinger. So you kill the level 90 timeline boss, and then your next immediate Harbinger is 100 corruption which is the baseline for when you immediately enter in Powered, your timelines are going to start at 100 Corruption there. So in addition to this, it also shows which timeline which timeline Harbingers you've killed and which ones you haven't. You've seen here, you can see here that I've killed all of the Harbingers so far, except for Fall of the Outcast and Stolen Lance. So basically what I need to do here is push the Corruption that it says, 275 in my case, in Stolen Lance or Fall of the Outcast. It doesn't matter which one. That's just the corruption I need to trigger a Harbinger fight. So you push through that timeline, you kill the timeline boss when you're at the required corruption level, and when that boss dies, the Harbinger spawns, and then you kill that Harbinger. It gets checked off on your list here, and your rank goes up. So the, the required corruption to spawn a Harbinger goes up in increments of 25. So the first one is 100. The next one will be 125, the next one will be 150. And so basically you're bouncing around between these timelines and you're killing the, you're raising your corruption to the required corruption and then killing the Harbinger. That gets checked off, your rank reward goes up, or your rank goes up and you get the new rank rewards. It can be a bit of a confusing system at first, but basically once you progress through the level 90 timeline and kill your first Harbinger, you'll see on the right side of your screen you kind of have a quest that walks you through it. You can find this too on the map under the Harbingers of Ruin. It will tell you the next stage of the quest, but if you ever forget where you're at or what you need to do, just check here the required corruption and what timeline you need to be in. So that's that for the Harbingers, and then if you want to take that a step further and challenge Aberroth, the pinnacle boss of this patch, you have to kill all ten of the Harbingers. And they drop these items called Harbinger Eyes. You don't need to worry about this early on, but essentially these Harbinger Eyes are later on going to act as keys to challenge the pinnacle boss. So you've killed all ten Harbingers, you bring a Harbinger Eye, and you bring it over to this altar. And you will, when you've killed all 10 Harbingers, you'll be able to use an eye here, and that opens up a portal to fight Abra. Anyway, guys, I hope that makes sense, and I hope this helps. I know a lot of people have been having a lot of questions about the Harbingers and how to spawn them and what timeline do I need to be in. So I hope this helps, and I hope this clears it up a little bit. Good luck fighting the Harbingers. I think they're really interesting enemies. Uh, the boss fights are a lot of fun, and it's kind of fun going in not knowing what to expect. 
If there's anything new with this patch that you'd like to see covered or any questions that you might have regarding other aspects of the game, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I appreciate you guys stopping by here, and I do hope this helps. Everybody have fun with patch 1.1, and I'll see you all again soon. Peace.